If you are ready to up your dog's fashion game for their next walk, let's make them a super cute dog poop bag holder with simple items you should have in your stash or can get at the Dollar Tree. And if you love sewing for dogs, you can also make it to match their leash, which surprise, surprise, I have a sewing tutorial for that too. So look for the link. Let's get started. Let's look at a finished product. So this dog poop bag holder is made out of fabric. It does use a buttonhole. That's the most complicated part of it. But otherwise, I wanted to use tools and materials that most beginning sewers will have around the house. So you're going to use a buttonhole. You're going to use a little bit of Velcro. You're going to create this loop. And then this is a carabiner clip, which I got at the Dollar Tree. Originally, they had the little ones that had four. This time when I went back, they only had the big ones. So you can get two for $1.25 or four for $1.25, depending on what they have in stock at the time. And then they also sell the waste bags four for $1.25. Such a deal. This would make this project a great thing to sew and sell if you're looking to earn a little extra money or a wonderful stocking stuffer or gift for your dog owning friends. So let's look at what we need. You're gonna need a seam wrapper or scissors to open your buttonhole, a little piece of Velcro. I just took this regular hook and loop and I just cut the piece and then I cut it in half. Then we're gonna have a two by three piece of fabric to make our loop. And then this is five inches by 13 inches to make the actual bag. So the first thing we're gonna do is you're just gonna fold this in half right sides together and you're going to sew down both sides. Now to get our loop created, we're going to turn it over and we're going to fold it in half and iron that. And it's a cute little iron. How many irons do you have? I have a big iron, I have this little travel iron, and then I also use my little Cricut Mini sometimes to iron. Let me know in the comments how many you have going for all your sewing projects. But anyway, back to our project. We're gonna open it back up and you can see the crease that we made when we ironed that in half. And we're going to fold each of these raw edges into that crease. And you're gonna iron on either side of it because we wanna keep the original crease as well. I'm gonna do the second side and then we're gonna fold that back, that a little press. Let's move. We have to sew that, we have to sew these next. Now for the tab, I'm just gonna sew really close. So our tab is ready. And now I'm just gonna turn this right side out. Now I'm gonna take this to the ironing board, I'm gonna press it flat and I'm gonna turn this edge under and press that as well. So I will be right back. So now we're gonna top stitch near the edge to keep that side closed. Oh, this is so much better of an angle for you. Okay, so now we're going to take half of the hook and loop tape, doesn't matter which half, and I'm gonna sew it centered on the fabric so there's about the same on either side. Now with hook and loop, you wanna make sure they are on the opposite side of the fabric. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this over, put it kind of there, and then I'm going to position the other half so that they're going to meet when these sides are even. So that's gonna make sure our closure works really well. And then I'm gonna sew that on next. Now you can do your hook and loop. You just wanna make sure it's on the opposite side. So we did that. You can do it before or after your buttonhole because I just realized you're going to have to change your presser foot the same a number of times. So now we're gonna take this off and I'm gonna put on my buttonhole foot. And I am using a Janome machine, which comes with this really cool automatic buttonholer. You put whatever button you're going to use. And even though we're not using a button, it makes the size perfect for me. And if you do have a Janome and don't know how, know how to use this, then I do have another video about it. Let's talk about placing your buttonhole. So you're gonna fold this in half and you're just going to finger press because we just wanna know where that middle, middle spot is. And then it doesn't matter which side you, you draw on. And I'm a big fan of using what you have. I love those because when you iron it, it just disappears. You can also use a chalk line because once you sew your buttonhole, you're going to basically rip that part out. Or you can use a Sharpie, you can use a pencil, just whatever you have that you are going to be able to see. So I'm gonna use the chalk so that you are gonna be able to see it too. Cause I might be able to see the pink, but you are not going to be able to in the video. So you need at least an inch buttonhole, but because I'm using this automatic buttonhole, I'm gonna measure how big 
the machine's going to make it. So it's going to make it an inch and a quarter. So inch, inch and a quarter, totally up to you. So we're going to measure and then I'm going to go inch and a quarter. Let's see. You just want to kind of center it. But, you know, it is a dog poop bag holder. So if it's not perfect, it's OK. So once you have the buttonhole in your fabric, you can either use scissors, poke a little hole in the fabric and cut with the scissors. Just don't cut any of the stitching. Or you can use a seam ripper. This is my favorite, Cindy's Seam Ripper. She's the owner of Riley Blake Designs and designed this thing. You just are going to poke that in there or whatever seam ripper you use and then just slowly push forward because you don't want to get overzealous and cut through any of your stitching. So you're just opening the fabric in between the stitching. So now our buttonhole is done. We have taken our loop and folded it in half and we're going to match the raw edges to the edge of the bag holder lined up with the buttonhole. And then I'm just going to use a little fabric clip and clip that there. Now we're going to fold this to close the hook and loop and make sure we have the two ends lined up straight. Now we're going to shift this so that the loop is lined up with your clip so that it's going to be on the opposite side of the bag of the buttonhole. Now I'm going to put the clip through all the layers, which is quite a lot on that side. And then I'm going to put one down here as well. And now we're just going to sew straight across here and straight across here. And I'm going to double back where the fabric overlaps and where the loop is on this side just to reinforce it. Now, the moment of truth. We're just going to unhook that. I'm going to flip it right side out. And now, all we need is the bags, the carabiner clip, and we can hook it to the dog leash. So all you do is you grab your bags, open this up. You're going to pull the first one and put it through the buttonhole. Then tuck your roll of bags in there and close that Velcro back up. Then you're going to grab your carabiner, whether it's the bigger one or this one. Get your loop on there. And then I'm going to put it on, you might notice, this matching dog leash. I have a video tutorial if you want to make your own dog leashes. It's a great gift set or great fashion set for your dog. And you're just going to put that onto the handle so you're ready to walk in style and clean up any business that your dog might do.